I'm Jeff Sun. I'm, a, I'm an urban designer working in the Places for Everyone team in Sustrans. Um, I'm going to briefly chat to you about what we require of our project partners um, to ensure any new active travel infrastructure is as inclusive as possible and can be for everyone. Um, I'll be touching on examples as I go along. For those unfamiliar with Sustrans, we're a charity um, with two key strategic priorities. Um, firstly, to deliver paths for everyone. This involves our work with the National Cycle Network, where by 2040, we want to see 5,000 more miles of traffic free paths and the removal of thousands of existing barriers. Secondly, um, we support local partners to shape um, cities and towns uh, across Scotland um, so that they can become more livable places um, considering improving the active travel experience for every, everyday journeys to places of work, school um, and for local services. The Places for Everyone programme is currently at the forefront of delivering new infrastructure in Scotland. Um, <clears throat> we administer a multi-million pound fund that is used to support both local authority and non-local authority partners in the delivery of active travel infrastructure for those everyday journeys. In supporting partners, we ensure that infrastructure is built to a certain design standard, adhering to a series of design principles, most of which speak directly, in fact, to issues around inclusivity. In supporting our partners through projects, we require projects to undertake a thorough engagement, design and monitoring process. I'll now quickly touch upon each of these areas and indicate some of the ways they help embed inclusivity into new infrastructure, using examples um, <coughs> as I go. Um, engagement is a key bedrock um, of our project work. Um, it ensures communities have a voice in what happens to their to their local to their local area. But what is a community? <laughs> um, and that's why we require partners to complete um, <coughs> an equality impact assessment at the very earliest st possible stage to help provide an early understanding of different groups within a community. Um, and can not only not only help define the diverse audience, this can not only help define the, the diverse audience for any engagement work, but could also indicate appropriate methods for engagement. The process of an equality impact assessment it helps set out what is known currently about the experiences of people with, prote with protected characteristic characteristics. Um, relating specifically to those shown on screen at the moment. It can also outline the impact you expect the schemes have and any mitigating measures um, to address those impacts. In terms of type of engagement, engagement, the last year has seen a drive in the use of technology to engage people in the development process. It's likely in some cases that this shift has made these processes more accessible, um, the engagement process more accessible and inclusive, um, removing things such as geographical lim geographical um, sort of limitations and constraints. However, there's no doubt there are populations who have limited access to the internet to technology where alternative physical printed media engagement has to be considered. Um, the main area of um, progress we've seen in Sustrans over the last year is in, is in engagement with um, sort of young people particularly where schools have in fact been one of the few communal spaces the engagement um, can can still take place in a sort of physical form um, a number of uh, projects have been able to use technology to great effect and um, here's, here's an example of um, a project on on the west coast which looked at use of a virtual reality headset um, to help immerse um, in this case, the user group being children um, into the future design options and scenarios um, of a new um, uh, active travel route. We've also at Sustrans um, had our projects use Minecraft software 
um, again, this is um, uh, more specifically geared towards young people, but it's proved very effective in helping to get everyone involved um, at, at particular schools in, in a project, no matter what level of confidence um, the, the ch children have, as it is, it is quite a common piece of software, um, which obviously sort of introduces a a, again, a familiar language um, to a process that is sometimes considered sort of quite dry and unengaging, um, particularly for sort of young people. It's also again sort of more more physical process that we've undertaken, maybe not using so much technology, but uh, trying to trying to get people engaged with um, particular sites by taking them to sites, using a landscape officer to go to specific areas within their community to identify what could be improved um, um, at a very early stage of a project to identify areas for active travel improvement and placemaking improvement as well. Our design approach um, is fundamentally that streets and spaces should function as more than just car parks and traffic corridors. As such, we do support our partners in bringing forward measures that can reduce traffic, particularly in residential areas, and where possible reallocate road space for active travel purposes. In terms of getting the design detail right, um, so that it supports all, um, the, it's used by all user groups, we have been developing a piece of software called AutoTurn. This is a vehicle swept, swept path analysis and turn simulation piece of software and can be used to trial how different types of vehicles including things like adapted cycles and cargo bikes um, will in, in, interact with that, that infrastructure. It can help designers better understand how cycles move and turn and how much space they need ensuring cycling infrastructure can be designed to be more inclusive and accessible. Um, the software can help justify the need to remove barriers and indicate how far apart barriers must be placed to allow all, all the users access to a path. It can also track the movements of a cycle um, at junctions and turnings so you can consider the appropriate corner radii etc. Here's just an example up on screen um, which showed a uh, sort of crossing point and just how um, in this case I think it was cargo cargo bikes would gain access to a uni directional um, cycle bath being introduced from some, from some side streets. Thirdly just touching on monitoring and behaviour change um, as part of our, our project work we encourage partners to set up plans to monitor sites so that evidence of an intervention's efficacy and meeting its original objectives can be recorded. Um, helping identify the need to make adjustments to improve the infrastructure and or consider the need poten um, potentially for a program of behaviour change measures within that local community, something I'll touch on briefly in a second. Finally, monitoring data can build a body of evidence as well um, to support and guide future interventions um, so that uh, arguments can be made for um, improving active travel in other areas. So monitoring can include the collation of uh, quantitative data such as pedestrian and cycle counts. Um, this should be done both pre and post construction stage so that the impact of infrastructure um, can be highlighted. It can also involve uh, qualitative data where the nuances of experience can be captured through interviews and surveys. This is key for understanding more fully how accessible and inclusive the infrastructure is for all for different types of user groups. Um, monitoring of an intervention can also be achieved by initially running a street trial as well as, it, as is shown in the photo on screen with temporary works are undertaken to give a better understanding of the impact of a more permanent um, scheme. We are also keen at SUSTRANS to see some of the non-tangible barriers addressed um, in our PFE projects, um, Places for Everyone projects, um, and this can be done through, through as mentioned before, behaviour change. Um, 
looking at some of the individual and social factors that can mean people are discouraged from using the physical infrastructure being introduced. This can be done by deploying a number of different methods, including education and persuasion, such as this example of redefining a school as being child friendly. Um, uh, coercion is another method, as is modeling. Um, training is key as well. In this, in this case, um, workplace cycle training has been deployed to address things like lack of confidence uh, and, and also to challenge and update um, preconceived perceptions about the dangers of cycling on the roads. And finally, also incentivization is, is also um, a key method uh, of intervention. Um, for baby change. Here is an example of a commuter club that seeks to create a sense of community and collective endeavour around actively getting to and from work with prizes um, to incentivise people to share their commuting experiences, photos <coughs> and stories. Um, now that's just a, a sort of brief run through um, the programme that we run um, here at SUSTRANS. If you have any more questions then please feel free to drop me an email on dan.jeffs at sustrans.org.uk or join me in the breakout room um, later um, and may, where maybe I can provide more specific information around uh, sort of and the inclusivity um, of the program and what we try to achieve here at Sustrans. Thank you very much for your time.